Let's see if we can find this room that Theodore Meldon supposedly locked himself in to protect humanity. Good idea. I'm starting to think a room like that can come in handy. <gasps> Something's crawling! Over there! Miss Tuckle? Shh! I snuck past that lab tech, Miguel. My Lulu's gonna have her kittens any time now. Until we figure out what's going on, it isn't safe for you. Oh, yeah? Eat my dust, bowl cut! Ah. Wait, Miss Tuckle! Bowl cut? <gasps> Where'd she go? Miss Tuckle! Split up. How far could she have gotten? for the red carpet in no time. Take a seat, espresso. Let's see what we have to work with here. Look. Please, ticks, mange, reality. TV star. Oh, honey, don't worry. We work miracles here. <laughs> and now for the finishing touch. A fine specimen. <laughs> he must have taken first prize numerous times. Oh, <laughs> no. It's not the prizes that matter, it's the joy of the competition. Agreed. I find these things wonderfully relaxing. <laughs> Suspicious? Fire hazard. Wow, these are all bills. How is she going to pay a five hundred thousand dollar prize when she's in financial trouble? <gasps> what are you doing in here? I work here. What's your excuse? Uh, that's a good question. Excellent question. Totally, top marks in the question asking department. Guys are pro. We were lost and it was dark, so we thought maybe these papers would tell us where we were. You're in Mrs. Vandergraaff's office, and this is the door back out of it. Gosh, well, there you go. It's a good thing you came around. Thank you. Come on, Scoob. I can't believe we got away scot-free. Huh? Scott wants payback! <gasps> what do we do, Scooby? Run from that! Sold! <laughs> That's Elton Snood. The man was so desperate to win three years ago, he tried to bribe a judge. Uh, ghastly. Yeah, he was banned from the competition. This is his first year back in... Was that you? Help me! Ah! Ah! My money! Everybody! Oh! Ah! Ah! Like, follow my lead. There you 
are? Our first trip to New York City and you're lollygagging. Uh, yeah, lollygagger. Shopping's done. Time to see the sights. Taxi! Way to. Uh... Everywhere! <laughs> Can you believe that guy? The old pulled into a pitch black ventilation system routine. <laughs> Run! <laughs> Bay researching the alien infection. Uh, hello? Soap anybody. Guys, Velma's got some information about the alien infection. Oh, hi, Cool Fort. What happened here? Where's the rest of the crew? Oh, uh, Wendell, something got to him on the asteroid. We escaped back to the bromidic, but he got in. Maybe through the sub level ore processor. It spread to the others. Couldn't tell who was who. Can only trust the soap. Daphne, I think she's just being polite. Jackwards! Please, you can't just go. Who will run my bathhouse? This place is cursed! I quit! Beware, Kanyaku! Uh, was that a cultural thing? I don't think so. What's a Kanyaku? It is an ancient mystery. Mystery? What kind of mystery? One that's gone unsolved for 700 years. Respectfully, Officer Hiroshi, Kanyaku is a silly children's story. Hold on. There's a mystery here that no one solved in 700 years? Yes. The legend speaks of a lowly cook who fell in love with a beautiful princess. Wait, I know this legend. The cook begged the spirit of the sea for a gift to give the princess to win her heart. The greatest recipe ever. It was handed to him on a golden scroll. And the spirit of the sea told him if he prepares the dish perfectly, the princess would return his love. But if he fails to follow the recipe exactly, he would be cursed forever. That night, bandits attacked and stole the scroll before he could finish the dish. Without the recipe, the cook didn't know the final ingredient, and the dish was never completed. So the spirit of the sea turned him into Kanyaku, the crab demon cursed for all time. Like, it's the first monster we can actually eat. Yeah. Crab. 
They say he still haunts Tokyo searching for his lost scroll. Quite a mystery. Yeah, it is. I'd never solved a 700-year-old mystery before. Slow down, Fred. We just got here. Yeah, and after all that discussion of crab, Scoop and I want to try some real, authentic Japanese cuisine. Something new and unrecognizable. Yeah, Fred. Can't we enjoy our vacation for maybe 10 minutes? Oh, of course. I'm sorry. 10 minutes, then we start looking for clues. Irashimasu! Good evening. My esteemed colleague and I would like to try your most unique dish. To honor my esteemed dignus. Ah, bee larva. When they're done that. Yeah, like I'm sorry. While bee larva is one of our favorite ice cream toppings, we're looking for something we can't get at home. Oh. Tuna eyes. Tuna eyes? Seriously? Don't worry, Scoob, I'll handle this. Tuna ice is a pizza topping for the place we get delivery from. What we would like is the rarest dish in Japan. Sea slug? Nope. Uh-uh. Squid ink. Eh. What, seriously? Dorsal foot? Are you even trying? Century-old eggs. Next! Octopus ice cream. Uh. Wasp crackers? Boring! Rewarata <laughs> recipe. Ah, thanks for the tip. Two no rorotata recipes, please. <gasps> oh, I, 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 After all, isn't that what makes this place so much? <laughs> Fun. Let me know if you need my assistance. Yeah, we'll jump right on that, Johnny Giggle Pants. <laughs> like we just ran into, then away from the evil jester! He's ha ha scary. So he's real. Where does something like that come from? I think I have the answer to that. This coin, I recognize it. It's the only coin ever minted featuring the face of King Todd the short lived. King Todd celebrated his first day in power with an extravagant banquet, just like the one King Avery is holding tonight. At that feast, the king's fool, William the Silly, made the king laugh so hard he ruptured all of his organs. The jester was accused of being an evil demon, with a really well-developed sense of humor, and was immediately executed. Legend says, to this day, the spirit of William the Silly seeks revenge on whoever is in possession of this cursed coin. <laughs> How is that funny? Yeah, too soon, Fred. That wasn't me. <laughs> Some call me fool, but tis plain to see. True fools are those who think they've escaped me! Stood up! He can't follow all of us. Do you think they just stop and laugh and like high five each other when this happens? That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next. Come on, let's see what you got, kid. Make with the funny. The pox upon your filthy heads. Today you live, but soon you will be. Boo! Stale! What else you got? Too political. Uh, well, mayhaps. A small fowl came in the Polo Road and dared to cross it, did you? Nay, me thinks boring. Thou dost stinketh. Sorry, kid. You just don't have the chops to be a big city comedian. Here's your stuff and a bus ticket back home. You tried, kid. Come back when you worked up some fresh material. Motley is so 1400s. Hmm? Hmm. <sighs> Four. Wow! A classic vampire in a creepy castle mystery. You guys are in for a real treat. <laughs> Kiddos, I'm Sheriff Boone. How you doing tonight? Uh, hi. Aren't you chilly? Ah! I'm chilly. Yeah, it's it's wet and cold, but it's a, a dry wet. 
Now, what on earth are you doing up here? We've gotten reports that people have gone missing, like poof! I know I'd rather be in bed drinking chamomile tea than patrolling around this awful place. <laughs> I heard that. It's been suggested a vampire lives here. Honey, <laughs> it's a dangerous enough world. We don't need to be making up boogity men on top of it. Only person who lives here is Paco, the caretaker. He's a couple of orange trees short of a grove, but he's no Sferatu. See what I did there? Now, I don't see any funny business here, but to be safe, you little munchkins should go on home and binge watch your favorite shows. I know I am. Ciao. Well, your training is complete. You'll get a certificate in the mail within the next five business days. Good luck. It's been an honor. Wait, we still don't know how you guys solve mysteries. Look, this is our main job. Classic first step of the hero's journey. Refuse the call to adventure. Fine. And may I help you? Paco, right? Uh, we're investigating a local mystery. Would you mind if we came in? Be my guest. <laughs> this way, please. Have you noticed anything out of the ordinary around here? No. Actually, have you noticed anything that would fit right in around here? Specifically, a vampire? Nesta, I mean a vampire? That's ridiculous. Please wait in here. May I offer you refreshments? I make a mean bunt cake. Uh, no, thanks. I, I, I... Bunt cake? Yeah! Like tricks of the trade. The more horrifying the environment, the better the food. We live counterintuitively. <gasps> so, like this is where I normally say, Zoinks! I whimper and tremble. What does Zoinks mean? Is it code for a secret maneuver or something? Jinkies, Morley. How? They haven't taught us to do jinkies yet. Is, is it like a shoulder roll? Relax, guys. Let's not jump to any conclusions. It's just an old, ornate Eastern European coffin in the middle of a ceremonial chamber in a creepy old castle. <sighs> we made it! Yeah, I hope Shaggy and Scooby weren't devoured by your feet! House Rule 17! The kittens cried because there's sand inside! It's a beach house, Daphne. <gasps> like, fortunately for us, sharks can't run in high heels! <clears throat> What are you doing? Uh, out of bed, because, uh... Like, everything's fine, so you can, uh... Stare at us suspiciously. Hmm. We're good! All good! Good! Being the word that describes us. Okay, then. Okay, then. Good night. Good, good night! night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Sandwich high, sandwich, big sandwich, up into the sky. Sandwich, big sandwich, towering above. Sandwich, big sandwich, piled high with love. Like it was nice of Daph and Velma to let us keep an eye on Fred while they went off to look for clues on Horror Beach. <laughs> All filler, no killer. <laughs> That sound came from Fred's room. Maybe we should check it out. Sandwich, big sandwich. Up the stairs we tread. Sandwich, big sandwich. 
Gonna check on Fred. Freddy boy? Are we sure these are his footprints? They smell fishy. What Shaggy and Scooby described sounds like the ancient legend of a shark man who attacks those who invade his habitat. His name is Dorsal Foot. <laughs> what? Seriously? <laughs> it sounds scarier in Latin. This is Jack Landale's house. <gasps> it's Dorsal Foot! He wants an autograph! Light it up. I always wanted to say that. Whoa, hey, it's just me, a guy. Those cameras. <gasps> You're a paparazzi! He's a pizza? No, a paparazzi is a photographer who takes pictures of famous people. Name's Charlie Potts. That shark monster scared off all the other paparazzi. But the money one photo of Landale could earn is worth the risk to me. What are you doing around here? I live next door. I'm supposed to be around here. Hey, you get me a shot of Landale, we could sell it for a million dollars. Split the money 70-30. 60-40. You listen, you. Beat it before I call security. Okay, okay. Let me know if you change your mind. <sighs> Can you believe that guy? Total creep. But it doesn't explain why Dorsal Foot came this way. If you're seeing if I changed my mind, the answer is, <laughs> yeah, right! Uh -oh. for Fred to say it. Run! <laughs> Every single time. <laughs> Welcome to Fathom Your Feet. The beachside shoe stand for all your beachside shoe standing needs. Sweet, 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 sweet. First time? Ah, oh, yes. I see evolution kind of snuck up on you there, huh? Don't worry, we're here to help. Size 14 in shark. I've got just the thing. For the elegant walking shark about town, nothing says class like hot pink stiletto pumps. Oh, they are so you. Go on, try them out. <laughs> Speaking of which... What? When I was a little girl, I dreamed of being a nature ranger. But Mother wouldn't allow it. She said the outdoors is just a giant bathroom that wants to eat you. Wise woman. While we're here, I plan on earning every official nature ranger skill patch, unofficially, and pretend to fulfill my childhood dream. That is inspiring. I just earned my I want to earn all the nature ranger patches patch. Camp inspection! <laughs> camp inspection? Citation for being unprepared for camp inspection. But, but I... I am Ranger Mark. Your job is to know the rules. No wandering off the paths, no loud music, no music which I personally don't like, etc. and so forth. Don't worry, we have nothing but respect for nature. And rules. I love rules. I even love the word rules. Rules. Yeah. I hope so. In my forest, nature disrespecters and rule breakers end up in one place. Forest jail. There's a forest jail? Citation! The last people here left a huge mess and blamed it on Viking ghosts. Vikings? Here? Sounds like a mystery to me. The only mystery you need to worry about is where to find a good forest lawyer when you end up in forest jail. So follow the rules and remember, <laughs> my citation finger is twitchy. Like, how do we tell what is food and what isn't food? Uh, we'll want to eat food. Oh, berries of some kind. Like, I love berries of some kind. <laughs> Bear! <laughs> Viking! 
Jingles! <laughs> now that the campsite's finished, we can focus our natural instincts on the Viking ghost mystery. Speaking of which, how long before Shaggy and Scooby come running screaming back to the campsite? Oh, Velma, ye of little faith. Should be another two minutes. Sounds about right. They're early. My instincts tell me something must be wrong. <laughs> okay, now my instincts are saying fight or flight. Flight! Flight it is! Amateurs and let an expert through. I cleaned it up a little. Where have you guys been? Like we both failed and succeeded in avoiding a monster. It evens out. You saw the snow monster? You mean Freaky the Snowman? Yeah. I say we leave right now and start our lives over from when we decided to come here. Ah, uh, toboggan again. Ah, you know, this isn't so bad. The sun on your face, the snow-covered earth beneath your feet. I don't know what I was so afraid of. Maybe I shouldn't hate. Water! Are you okay, Velma? That's it. You want to fight snow? Okay, baby, you and me. Let's go! Oh, I take it back. Run! Where? Worst idea in the history of thinking. We could stand our ground and fight. I apologize. That's the worst idea in the history of thinking. <laughs> we'll have a better chance if we split up. Into the woods, Scoop. Like he'd be crazy to follow us in there. Long foretold. We waited years for him to come to save our kingdom bold. The evil witch has placed a spell upon our enchanted land. But with your help, we'll lift that curse. Come and take my hand. <laughs> Go on a quest. A magic quest. To find the thing. What is that thing? Who knows? It, it doesn't matter, matter as, as long, long as you go, go away. <laughs> Will we be here, here when you return? return? We'll never know, we'll know the answer, answer if you stay. So on your way. Into the frame. Go on your quest to save. The <laughs> Gotta stop this mutant rabbit and save the Hocus Pocus Palace. That's why we're going undercover as an auditioning magician and his entourage. So you just happen to have that outfit and this isn't an attempt to live out some elaborate magician fantasy? That's absurd. It's for the mystery. Psh, elaborate magician fantasy, please. So I'm the edgy but classically trained magician, Freddy or not. In my past, there's a tragedy involving my most famous trick, which I refuse to perform anymore or even talk about. This creates conflict with Velma, my manager, who was being groomed to take over her controlling father's real estate empire, but here, it'll be easier for you to just study your backstories I've prepared. Cool, so I'm your stage assistant? Yes! Yes! yes. 
You've been offered a lot of money by my arch nemesis, the great Gorgonzolo, to learn the secret of my most famous trick. On roller skates. Done. I wonder who that is. direction the monster does not go. This time, Scoob and I want to go in that direction. Fine, we'll switch. Hup, up, 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 up. Not so fast. You agreed to that awfully quickly, which means that you must know that the monster's gonna follow us in that direction. Makes sense. No, it doesn't. Shaggy, Scooby, just pick a direction. If only it were that simple. But it's not. Yes, it is. Clearly, you must have known that by so readily agreeing to switch with us, we would change our minds to go back to the original direction we were gonna go. An obvious mistake. Therefore, we should go with our original, original instinct, which is to go in the direction you were gonna go. One might have thought. Because you would know that the most prudent course of action was to not follow our instincts and follow the direction that we were gonna go, that you were gonna go, that we were gonna go. We wanna go that way. But <laughs> oh, my logic was so impeccable! Nice dub listening. <laughs> You are Tasha, right? Huh? You must be my new second assistant. This is my first assistant, Nina. We need to get you in a costume. I'd say size 22, extra furry. 22 McGee? Perfecto! Okay, let's do this. Okay, Tasha, let's start with the famous song, The Assistant and Half Trick. And now... What are you doing? Whoa, it's an illusion, Nina. See? <laughs> Nina, come back! It's just a trick! <laughs> this theater plays Archie's first film, Skyscraping, on a continuous loop. Like, do they have a concession stand? We can't watch a movie without popcorns, hot dogs, candy, nachos, and soft pretzels. It's in our contracts. <laughs> This movie is only 16 minutes long. You won't have time to eat all. <laughs> I agree it's amusing, but this was only his first film. Most of these jokes are lifted directly from Isaac Newton's first and third laws of motion from 1687. <laughs> 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 Like, excuse me, but we can't see Archie. Hmm. No, we can. We are now entering Fletcher Studios' film archive room. This is where people archive film in a room ah! uh hi are we interrupting something weird who are you friends of yours we're uh we're just looking into these stories about the ghost of archie barnes they're not uh -uh. stories it really happened we were there he attacked me because he doesn't want anyone to see that film it's cursed Ray Fletcher, the studio head, insisted I transfer this footage so he could finish that film and finally share it with the world. But I say anyone foolish enough to watch that movie gets what they deserve, right? See? Yeah. So where did you find the film to begin with? We discovered this trunk in the old prop warehouse. Inside is what Archie left in his office when he quit, including his last damaged film. This must be Archie's notebook. It shows in his own hand how he worked out the stunts and visual effects for all his films. Amazing, isn't it? You may be a violent monster, Archie, but you're also a genius.
You take that back! And if you look to your right... Wow! Uh, actually, no. Don't look to your right. Uh, film archive tour's over. And now we come to the part of our tour where we collide with our friends. The first immersive virtual reality system. You can travel anywhere inside Manputer Tech. Except Mallory's office. One simple misunderstanding. There's nothing creepy about friends looking out for friends. Anyway, as I was saying, we could go anywhere at Manputer Tech or the world. Uh, any place that serves food. <gasps> or even other worlds. Any kind of food is fine. Scoob, we're on Mars. Yeah, hungry on Mars. Like, can you take us to a food truck? A food truck? Yeah, oh. tacos. You're serious. I just told you you can literally go anywhere in time and space, and you want to go to a food truck. Food truck! But you can't even really eat the food. Food truck! Food truck, food truck, food truck, food truck, food truck. Okay. Food truck. <laughs> <laughs> like this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> That's beautiful. <sighs> Honestly, I don't know what went wrong. I'm starting to think it's just me. My creations have started to turn on me. It's like technology hates me. Ow! <laughs> See? Don't be silly. Technology isn't capable of hating. In fact, it's like a best friend, but without messy flesh and tears and emotions. What's this? It looks like a remote transmitter. Huh. Our first clue. Hey, like we just saw the most amazing. <laughs> it's okay, he's powered down. I am aware. I'm Butler 3000. There is no escape. I control all the technology. Why are you doing this? Humanity is gone. I will destroy all organic life forms that man pure tech, starting with you. Like we're about to be popularized! No, we're not. He's about to be Super Left Arm 3000! Super Punch! Are you about to go off? It's not me. <clears throat> ah, <laughs> like we already ate our vegetables. Good boys don't lie. But fast ones do. <laughs> 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 for you, Fred. I'm not in control. I'm in control of me. Wave your arms, Fred. Ooh. Wiggle your hips, Fred. How do you like that? Huh? You like that? Do you, like, what? What is that?
Oh, someone there? Mr. Jones. <laughs> Mr. Jones, your room isn't on this floor. Why are you? I uh, heard music and some other noises, and I thought we were the only guests in the hotel. You are. Oh, so this is your room? Oh, we would never enter those quarters. We? Mr. Jones, it didn't occur to me to tell you this particular rule before mm. because there was no reason for you to be on this floor. But since you're here now, I think you should know the most important rule of all. Okay, shoot. You must never enter room 455. Uh-huh. Because? Because, Mr. Jones, that's Mother's room. I'll keep that in. Oh, you won't get a quid. Oh, we don't charge for mystery solving. Besides, it's Christmas. Christmas? Bah humbug. Uh, what does bah humbug mean? I don't know. It just popped out. Why do you have to come into my house? We need to look for clues. Nice place, though not very festive. You must save a fortune on things that make people happy? Miss Blackwhite! Miss Blackwhite! Yes, Mr. Scrooge! I'm going to go lie down until Dr. Bugley arrives. We have... Uh, what's that word? Means people in your house that you want to leave? Guests? Yes, guests. We have those. Go in the dining room and straighten up, would you? Yeah! How's this? Good evening, Dr. Bugley. I was just sitting down with the family for Christmas dinner. What's wrong with old Scrooge this time? His late ex-business partner told him the ghosts of Christmas past, present, and yet to come will visit him in order to change his miserly ways. Oh, well, wait. Who are you people and where did you come from? Oh, we're here for the symposium. We just came over from America. Hmm. Well, I see you're well-traveled. Belgium, Latvia, Indonesia. Perhaps you've all brought with you a touch of that belgian latvia indonesian brain fever that's going around. And Mr. Scrooge has contracted it. I should go up and have a look at him. Okay, gang. Let's search for clues. Light it up. Oh, man. Should I wave a stick at him and make hissing sounds? <laughs> Velma Dinkley? Yes? Yes? Hmm? <gasps> Velma, ah! I am the ghost of Christmas past. Look at you as you once were, so full of potential, gifted with a mind that could help all humanity, a mind that could solve the world's problems. I forgot how close I'd been to solving the toilet paper conundrum. Velma, it's Freddie Jones from down the street. I want to talk to you. Someone wants to talk to me? <laughs> Hi, Velma. This is Daphne, Shaggy, and Scooby. Your mother seems really excited you have visitors. <laughs> yeah, she even offered to pay us in cookies and we got you out of the house. We're easily bought. And putting together a team to solve mysteries? We need you. You need me? Someone stole a Christmas pie cooling on Mrs. Mooney's windowsill. Hey! The thief left these strange markings. I think it might be some kind of code used by a... Those are scratches made by a raccoon trying to climb up to the windowsill. Raccoons. See? I knew you were the perfect person to join our gang. Come on, let's go. Fred, are you okay? For now. The warrior fell into another trap. It's like he has no idea where they are. Well, that's not going to hold him for long. Where are we? This is where Chuck was attacked in the video. And I think that may be the door that leads to the Zatari treasure. Like, are you done being Chuck crazy? Because we need a plan. And fast. I think I am. I guess I've always been envious of Chuck's ability to just let go. But the truth is, it was my brain that saved Chuck's neck more times than I can count. If we're going to catch the warrior for good and rescue Chuck, we'll need to do this <laughs> Faster, apparently. Oh, oh. Like, 
I'm sorry, Scoob. I do know what I mean. You're not my dog. You're my buddy. No, you're my human. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's what you meant? <laughs> <laughs> Two paths, but the chicken sees three, sees three, sees three. A third path. The solution is behind us. <laughs> the third path saved us. Rick was right. Good work, kids. I think. Honestly, I have no idea what's going on here. Allow me to clear it up for you. Our hunt for Chuck wasn't a complete bust, because the Satari warrior is... Chuck, Chuck Mangum? Chuck Mangum? I missed the clues at first, but they were all there. The warrior was reckless, and he displayed the same athleticism as Chuck. And the glow sticks Chuck was using to light the caves are what gave the warrior its supernatural gleam. Rick told us that the Zatari warrior of legend only attacked those who were after the treasure. But we weren't trying to find the treasure, we were trying to find Chuck. Which left the question, why was he attacking us? <laughs> the answer? Chuck was hurting us through the caves, keeping us on the path to where he knew the treasure was, but couldn't gain access to it himself. <laughs> Because unlike a Zatari warrior, Chuck didn't know where all the traps were. So, like, how did the warrior attack Chuck in the video, then? We fell for the oldest trick in the book. In the video, we never actually see Chuck and the warrior at the same time. He either gave us subtle glimpses of the warrior using lights and recorded sounds, or it was just him wearing the mask himself. Chuck, I, I just... why? You think I like being the dumb one? That last gate stumped me. I knew you'd be able to figure it out because you figure everything out. And now I will assign your character and costume. Daphne Blake will portray Her Majesty, Queen Victoria of England. <laughs> cool. Bradwick Haverall will portray the King of England, Steve. That name's not final. The King and the Queen, perfect. Fred Jones will portray Bumbling Police Constable Jerry. Oh, wait, uh, bumbling? Oh, let's not forget your bumbling gloves. <laughs> Vilma Dickley will portray Flumsy, the scullery maid. Oh, no. Norville Shaggy Rogers will portray Wickle, the chimney sweep. Yes! Like what headless count would want this grimy head? Scooby-Doo will portray Lady Bethabeth. Oh? Huh? Finally, Colander, our butler, will portray Peppermill, the butler. I am transformed. Now, you must pretend to be your character at all times, or be disqualified and confined to your room. As always, whoever solves the mystery will have their portrait hung in the Hall of Master Sleuths. <laughs> With that, let the Wuthering Monster Mystery Party begin! Did you hear that? They made me a bumbling police officer. That means I have to be bad at solving mysteries on purpose, or I'll be disqualified. Oh, sorry, Velma. Bumbling gloves. What am I gonna do? Beg pardon, Constable Jeery, but I don't know this Velma of whom you speak. Besides, it isn't a lowly scullery maid's place to offer advice. Oh, no. The rules say we have to pretend to be these characters the whole time, and you're Velma. You can't break rules. No, Constable, not Velma. I'm Flumsy. Now, please excuse me. I must tend to my duties in the kitchen. We should be celebrating. Speaking of which, where's the princess? <laughs> Coming! Coming! No, don't mind me. You guys are doing a bang-up job. Don't everyone rush over to give me a hand here. No, I'm good. <sighs> ah, here she is now. King Alexandros, Prince Lemelius, may I introduce my beguiling daughter, the Princess Velmonia. Mm. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Father, I'm having second thoughts about this whole arranged marriage thing. In fact, they're the same as my first thoughts. Princess Valmonia, my huh? poison ivy rash is going away. My dearest daughter, you know our military is weak. We need this union with Antagonos. They can protect us from our enemies. No, my mistress is not some piece of property to be traded off. Daphne, what are you doing? I must speak, mistress. Valmonia wants to live her own life, follow her own dreams, and set her servants free as soon as possible. Are your servants' words true, Valmonia? Well, I have always dreamed of being a great mathematician or playwright. A woman? In Greek theater? Absurd! Who will play the women? He's a fellow history buff and hired me as a consultant. I'm proud of this place. It's the most historically authentic Middle Ages experience you can have without contracting bubonic plague. Well, it sounds like fun to me. It's been months since I slew a mythical creature. I think I'll go with a classic fire-breathing dragon this time. Well, um... I like Scoob and I are going right to the medieval food tent. Suckling pigs, suckling giant turkey legs, suckling hard-boiled eggs and saffron and cloves. They suckled everything, then. Actually... Ooh, how are the lines for riding unicorns typically? Pretty long, huh? Uh-uh. Ugh, it smells like bad goat. <sighs> Authenticity. Like, what time does the actual renaissance begin? It seems to be running a little late. Still the Dark Ages. Man, my lips are chapped. What do they have, arid bleakness delivered here daily? <gasps> whoa, whoa, whoa! Hey! Daphne, no lip balm! That hasn't been invented yet. Really? Beeswax, peppermint oil, vegetable fat, boom! Lip balm. I just invented it. But you didn't invent lip balm. That's not historically accurate. Neither is that guy digging that hole, or Scooby scratching his ear, or that rat running up Fred's leg. <laughs> Isn't it possible that some peasant girl did invent lip balm, but that fact got lost to history? No! <laughs> Maybe. I don't... Look, just knock it off. I got us an invitation to see King Avery, and he takes this accuracy stuff even more seriously than I do. Well, as seriously? Oh, your majesty, don't you look wonderful? Why, thank you. I just had a run-in with the Headless Count. Already? Oh, dear. I hope he hasn't forgotten how the story goes again. Yeah, something didn't seem right. Bumbling Constable Jerry failed to get his man. Seems right to me. Oh. So, Your Majesty, perhaps you'd like to help me search for clues? How droll. This police constable wants Queen Victoria to follow him around like some lackey. I decree... A queen decrees things, right? I decree the Queen herself can solve this mystery single-handedly. Like, hello, Governor. We're called a chimney sweep at your service. I'm Lady Weatherworth. I don't suppose you guys want to do some mystery solving? Like, we feel it's best left to real mystery solvers. Like, the book's out of place, isn't it? Yeah, it's strange. The first clue has been found by Wiggle, the chimney sweep and Lady Bethabed. What? what? Whoa! I thought I'd put that in the no-no box. I regret nothing. Relax, you're a ringer. I mean, what'd you get on your SATs? A Nobel Prize nomination. Okay, I believe there's a rational explanation for everything. Then explain me. Can someone please explain why I'm having a conversation with puppets? Well, Daphne saw this Create Your Own Puppet store and decided a fun way to learn about yourself is to see yourself in puppet form. Then you started talking to the puppets. I can't help you with the rational part. Look! My puppet of me's puppet of me has a puppet of me, and so on. Oh, on. How dare you disturb the great Zeus in his home on Mount Olympus? Huh? Hera! A spider? Zap it! No, no, dear. I'm not gonna waste a perfectly good thunderbolt on a spider. Just get rid of it. Ooh, I hate spiders. Fine, I'll do it. Hmm? Sheesh! Ruler of all the universe, and I still have to deal with spiders. Squish it! I'm not gonna squish it. I'm gonna set it free outside. Ultra 
fire from here. <laughs> there, got her. There, see? Isn't that nicer than squishing the poor spider? You sweet thunder god. Clumsy. Yes, Constable <laughs> Jerry. <sighs> Fred? Fred? Hello? Anyone? Hello, Mum. <gasps> I'm so happy to see you guys. The Headless Count got everyone else. That horrible, that. So, like, where did the weathering store the cleaning supplies? What? We found residue on the feather that's just common household cleaner. Mm -hmm. The cleaning supplies would be in the basement pantry, but... But don't you get it? The game's over. Oh, we appreciate the vote of confidence. Look, we should have it wrapped up in a jiffy. Mm. Ta -ta. <laughs> Wait, no, guys! The Headless Count! <laughs> well, Lady Beth Beth, here we are. The end of the game. <laughs> if we're correct, and I know we are, down in this dark, creepy basement is proof that... The butler did it. Yes! Like, there he is, the butler, all tied up with ropes. And gang? Wait a tick. This can't be right. I guess that means the real headless count is Mary Jim, the circus clown. <laughs> nope. I mean, victim number one. <laughs> hmm? Like, I don't get it. If everyone we thought was really the Headless Count was tied up down here the whole time... That would mean... Not the Headless Count! <laughs> Real! All the village has been talking about a certain peasant girl and her miraculous inventions. Daphne, would you honor the king by showing his court your wondrous devices? Oh yeah, love to. Stall until I can find some real entertainment. Your Highness, here is my motorized duster, my watch, my flashlight, my dental floss, a couple parking stubs, some gum, watermelon flavored. And you invented all these? Oh, yeah, totes. However, I have a feeling history will fail to record my remarkable contribution to science. Wink, wink. I see. How interesting. Anybody capable of such incredible creations must certainly be... A witch! A witch has found her way into our keep! That's it! Thelma, you have brought to my very important royal feast a jester who can't jest, a witch, and a possible lawsuit resulting from whatever the food taster bit into. This is an outrage. I demand that... <laughs> Not me. Protect the king! <laughs> yeah. You flail and fuss and play pretend To petty matters you attend But still you fail to comprehend Today your reign comes to its end! 